Okay, so for those of you that are on this morning, good morning. Uh, I have one question on a dual credit homework that I'm going to answer first. And then we will talk about this Zoom meeting thing. <clears throat> okay. So first things first, let's open up my math lab, get a question answered. pop-ups why first period's always my guinea pig for all the stuff I have to do <laughs> whenever I present it actually gives me a grade too like it keeps track of what I do so According to my math lab, my average is terrible. That's fun. Oh, let's see if it actually loads. This is exciting. I was trying to come up with a funnier random corner today because it's April Fool's, but uh. I'm not clever enough. Oh, I'm going to post the link to the Zoom. Okay, so I just typed in the chat the direct link to the Zoom website if you're interested in the extra credit. Wow, this is just not loading, huh? Let's refresh and see if we get any progress. Oh, there we go. We just had to bother it a little bit. Yeah, we don't have a lecture today, so just uh, open office hours if anyone shows up. We can answer some questions. I got one last night, like uh, whenever it was. Midnight, whenever y'all youngins stay up. No, I can't say anything. I think I was up till midnight playing League of Legends last night. Okay. I think it was question 21. No, it was question 22. Oh, we actually already did this on stream. There's a recording of this already. Um, I guess I'll do it again. It doesn't hurt. You have multiple places to look at it. So uh, this is actually a fairly, you know, you would think it's chapter six, section one. It's, um, you know, oh, it's just going to be right triangles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is actually a pretty involved problem. If you're not super familiar with uh, sticking equations together, it seems like there's a, a lot going on. You do need to create a system of equations. So here, let's uh, get the pen going. And let's get the old calculator going. Ah. There we go. Okay, so it says the tower is 550 meters high. Suppose a building is erected such the base of the building is on the same plane as the base of the tower. That just means that everything's on level ground. And then it gives you an angle from the top of the building to the top of the tower and the top of the building to the bottom of the tower, the foot of the tower. How high would the building have to be? So you've got a tower. Here's the here's the drawing. Here's the setup. You've got a tower. We'll call this T for tower. And then at some distance away, you've got a building. Okay. 
Okay, so it gives you angles for the top of the building to the top of the tower and the top of the building to the bottom of the tower. So from here, this being the vantage point, I have that angle and I have that angle. The tower is 550 meters high. So if the whole thing is 550. And I think that's, I mean, besides the actual angles, that's all the information they give us. So 80.38 for the elevation. And then the depression angle is 55.05. So notice how we've created two right triangles in this problem. You have the one on top, you've got this one, and you've got this one. If you look at the two vertical sides that we have, yeah, let me use a laser pointer. So if you look at the two vertical sides we have, this one and this one, you know those lengths added together would be 550. but the whole point of the problem at the end, if you look at the question statement, is how high is the building? How tall is the building? Uh oh, get some lag here. So this is the unknown variable. This is the thing we are eventually trying to find at the end of the problem. If the height of the building is x, that means the height of this triangle here is also x, assuming the buildings go straight up in the air. That means on the blue triangle up top, that vertical length is 550 minus x. The other key piece of information, I know a lot of you are looking at the view and example before you try to do this problem. Um, the other piece of information that ties everything together is the fact that those two triangles actually share a side. So this one right here. They share that side and you're gonna need math to represent it because you're gonna do substitution to plug it in. You can call it anything you want. Um, we'll call it, I don't know, Y, is that too simple? I used Y last time, let's call it like W. So that side W that's shared between the two triangles is going to be involved in both equations. So if you just look at the blue triangle, the one on top, you have an angle Relative to that angle, you've got the opposite side and the adjacent side. You have no information about the hypotenuse. So for triangle one, tangent, make sure I'm not writing under my overlay again. I am. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so the setup here is tangent of 80.38 equals opposite over adjacent. So, oh, there's not three marks on an equal sign. So equals 550 minus x divided by w. <coughs> opposite divided by adjacent. Same thing for the green triangle down below. Tangent of 55.05 .05 equals opposite over adjacent x over w. So you've created a system of equations, two equations, two variables. So uh, the whole goal is to solve for x, so we want to substitute in for w to get rid of it. So for either of these, solve for w. So if I just use that second equation, multiply the w over, divide the tangent over. So w equals x over tangent 55.05. There we go. And I can substitute that part in to the other equation. So what you end up getting is tangent 80.38 equals 550 minus x divided by x over tangent 55.05. So you've got some cleaning up to do from here, but this essentially finishes the problem.
as soon as you get that set up there. So let's go ahead and finish the problem. Again, this is on a recording earlier, but might as well just do it if anyone's tuning in now. So on the right hand side, I have a fraction being divided, so you need to flip and multiply. <coughs> oh, sorry. So you've got tangent 80.38 equals 550 minus x. And then since you're dividing by a fraction, oh, since you're dividing by a fraction, you want to flip and multiply. So this is going to be tangent 55.05 divided by x. See, the fraction flips. So two things can happen here. One is this x gets multiplied over. The other thing is this tangent 55 can distribute here. So you've got x times tangent 80.38 equals 550 tangent 55.05 minus x times tangent 55.05. And it's a linear problem. You don't have to do any quadratic factoring. You don't have to do any slide and divide, anything like that. There's no x squared. But you do need the x's on the same side of the equal sign so you can factor it away. So I'm going to take the negative x tangent 55.05 and I'm going to add it over to the other side. So I've got x tangent 80.38 plus x tangent 55.05 equals 550 tangent 55.05. So the x can now factor away. equals that junk and I'm running out of room on this second slide here but you just take that parentheses and divide it over so once we type that into the calculator we should get our answer uh, it does say in the instructions round intermediate values to four decimal places as needed that's just so that you keep enough of the decimal so we want here oh here let's clear this off so on the top, I've got 550 times tangent 55.05. On the bottom, I have that parentheses. So tangent 80.38 plus tangent 55.05. I did not close that parentheses. Hold on. Wait. 107.3. Oh, 35, yeah, that was the answer. So there we go. Ah. There's the answer. And I'll go ahead and post this again to the Google Classroom just so there's multiple places you can find it. For those of you that were questioning that one, yeah, I know it's kind of a sudden change. Everything up till that point has been super, super easy. It takes you like 10 seconds, and then you get this one that actually takes a couple of minutes of work. But there we go. Okay, um, that's the only actual math question that I had in chat yesterday. Uh, the other question that I had was from a lot of the uh, high school pre-cal folk that are asking about, hey, wait a minute, why did all my grades change? Why did all my grades change? Um, I did talk about this several times, but let me do it again for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, what's going on is um, the district changed all of the weights of all your grades, if you haven't been keeping up. so. Um, homework grades are now 80% of your average, tests are now 20% of your average, which seems kind of backwards, but they're weighting uh, your daily work, your participation, all that stuff. They're weighting that way more than tests. So what that means for us is you already had a grade that was on your progress report. Remember, your progress report got done right before spring break. So up until all this online school stuff started, your progress report's all we had to go on. So um, 
I had to move everything, I had to move all the categories over, and I had to make sure your average currently matched what the progress report said, because whenever they just manually changed all the weights, it screwed up a lot of your grades. So I moved all your grades over to our, you know, our warm-up section in this class, or whatever your non-major grade is for your other teachers. And, um, I mean, honestly, the only fair way to just make sure your average matches what your progress report said is I just took a copy of all your grades and then I just changed every single grade to what your progress report said. So now you have your progress report grade plus all the stuff you're going to be doing for me online from now on. Um, some of your pro in fact, I'd say a good 40% of you, your progress report grades are screwed up either because you didn't take test number one or you failed it or and you were in regular, you were trying to retest test number one or you turned in a bunch of stuff right before spring break and I didn't get a chance to grade it yet, whether that's homeworks or whatever, retests, something like that. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I no longer have access to those papers. Uh, they are sitting on my desk right now and I can't get to them. So, also, I don't live in Baytown, so um, if I miraculously got permission to go up there, it would take me a very long time to get it. So uh, what I decided to do, uh, this is a combination of I think the easiest thing we could do plus the fairest thing I can do for people that are, you know, some people are missing more things than others. So I uploaded on the Google Classroom an assignment for you. And it's just a, a, another version of exam number one, of test number one. So I'm doing it right now on stream. So if you head over to the classwork tab, if you look at the bottom, there's this exam one only for current failures. So um, if you are, have a failing average for your progress per grade at all whatsoever, just take this test, do it just like you did test number two. By the way, I graded all your test number twos if you didn't look. So It looks exactly like your exam, except it's, a, it's just a different version I modified for home. Okay. It's got the same questions. I even filled in the unit circle for you down at the bottom. Same questions as review. Take a look at the review if you want. Submit that back in. I'll grade it like a quote-unquote retest. Except also some of you are just missing so you can get up to 100 on it. So just whatever your current situation is, just take the test and do it. I will fix your progress report quote-unquote slash pre spring break grade and all those numbers that are the same I will replace them all with what they're supposed to be if exam one were fixed okay this also takes into account some of the papers you may have turned in before spring break um, I will fix the grade a little higher to compensate so pre-cal please get that done and your grade will be fixed. Okay. Um, just checking for questions in chat. I don't see too many of us right now. Okay, so um, I think what I'm going to do for the rest of today is talk about the assignment, the extra credit assignment, sorry. So um, we're going to do a Zoom video conference call. And um, I guess for those of you that are in chat right now, we'll just try to test run it. But on Friday um, at, I guess, I guess eight o'clock, I don't know. Do you think enough people will be awake at eight o'clock? I might have to make it a, a different time. I mean, it's the only one that can guarantee people will be free. So maybe we'll just do Friday at 8 o'clock. We're going to start a Zoom meeting, and uh, you're going to find groups. So it's a group assignment. I mean, part of the reason I'm doing this is just to get you to actually interact with people online. <laughs> but um, you're going to come up, and I'm, I'm going to have details for you on Friday, but you're going to come up with some kind of deliverable product 
and I'm leaving it vague on purpose because it's going to be up for interpretation. I'm letting you do whatever you want. Some kind of finished product that you can share with everyone else that's doing the extra credit project that's going to be related to COVID-19. And I know you're tired of hearing about it, but um, it'll be loosely math related because I'm going to ask you to do some form of calculation in it. But um, you can come up with any topic you want. You know, some kind of you know, we'll, we'll get into details on Friday. I'm, I'm actually planning this with Rice University, if you didn't hear this yesterday. But the main thing is that it's going to be related to coronavirus, and it's going to be related to math very, very loosely. But you will just come up with something, whether it's going to be like um, a mini movie, you know, like a movie maker thing, or a PowerPoint presentation, or just talking and showing things, whatever you want to do. But... Uh, Zoom is free for everyone. They've opened up all their things to everyone. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start a Zoom meeting for those of you that have already. That have already done this. Um, Oh, I'm going to have to do a meeting password and code and stuff. This is also new for me because I haven't hosted a meeting on here before. I've only joined a bunch of meetings. There we go. Okay, so if any of you happen to be awake and watching, if you want to test run your Zoom just to make sure it's working, I, I put a link in chat for an invitation code. Uh, is This code's actually going to be fine for the meeting as well because it's just my open meeting room. Also, my webcam and audio are not working because Twitch is using them. But um, we're just going to uh, use Zoom for this group presentation. So I, one of the big things, if you want this extra credit, is that you need to have um, video and audio enabled. So don't be too shy. Dress, I guess, somewhat. Put actual clothes on. <laughs> At least a shirt, right? Uh, if you're on a computer, you you know you're using your webcam. That's great. If you're using your phone, you can use the f the face cam on your phone. That's also great. Uh, your iPad will work. There are tons and tons of ways to get Zoom working. So Friday, we are all going to log on. I'll post on the Google Classroom today. We are all going to log on, and. We are going to make groups for a group presentation. It'll take about two weeks. Remember, we're closed until May 4th at the earliest. I'm going to assume we'll go through the end of the school year, but. Yep, that's it. Not a whole lot today. Just at some point between now and Friday, make sure Zoom works for you. Uh, you don't have to make an account. You can just log into the uh, meetings. It'll just ask you for your name and then ask you to enable stuff. But I mean, that's all I got. Answered all my emails, answered all my questions, talked about the extra. Oh, sorry, the, the question I've been getting from people, um, how much extra credit? So. Um, it's going to be a, for your high school people, it's going to be pretty significant. I would say, I'd say anywhere between like 10 to 20 points on a test grade, something like that. Actually, well, whatever, whatever grade I can put on that the grade, that the grade book will allow me that will give you the most. So I can't just directly add it to your averages, but I mean, I guess I could. 
my plan is to swing your average by roughly three to five points so whatever I need to do to do that whether I'm manually doing things or I guess I'll finalize that later uh, dual credit people um, I'm not sure yet I would say probably similar to what we did um, last semester you know up to five points for a perfect presentation that fits the whole rubric that I have in mind but it's not guaranteed that you'll get five you know when we did our board game project that's a you know out of all the groups that participated maybe like 30% of you got the whole five points on everything right but even if you do participate you could still get one two or three point you know something like that something for everyone for participating at least oh I'm also giving you a free daily grade for joining the zoom meeting on Friday so show up on Friday we probably won't stream on twitch on Friday okay all right, I will post this info to the Google Classroom. Um, I am still available if you need me for the next 30 minutes or so, but I'm gonna set up all this stuff on the Google Classroom and upload this video. And that is it.